Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today we're going to learn about functions and relations. Function notation is typically written as f of x, or another letter, g of x, h of x are very common, where f is the name of the function. So you may see f of x and g of x together, and the different letter, f and g, is just telling you different names for the functions. x is your input variable, and it comes from the domain, where f of x is the function value, or y. So you can think of f of x as being the same as y. The reason we use f of x is because it tells us that the graph that we have or the equation we're given is a function. So it tells us a little more about what we have than just y equals. Very important, f of x does not mean to multiply f and x. It's just telling us the name and what's happening. Here's an example. We're going to evaluate the function f of x equals x squared plus 3x for these given values of x. So what it means to evaluate is just substitute in the given value for x. So f of negative 2 is saying calculate your f function when x is negative 2 and tell me what that is. So f of negative 2 would equal negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so that equals negative 2. So we would say f of negative 2 equals negative 2. Since f of negative 2 is saying our x is negative 2, this is the same as saying the point negative 2, negative 2. Okay. What if we're asked to evaluate f of t minus 3? All it's telling you to do is replace your x with t minus 3. So x squared plus 3x would become t minus 3 squared plus 3 times t minus 3. Well, t minus 3 squared is going to give us a perfect square trinomial. It gives us t squared minus 6t plus 9. And then the second part, we distribute the 3 to get plus 3t minus 9. Combine our like terms, and we have t squared negative 6t plus 3t is negative 3t and 9 and negative 9 cancel, so f of t minus 3 is equal to t squared minus 3t. So notice, we didn't do anything with that t minus 3 in that function notation. It's just telling us what we evaluated or what input we put into the function. So a little more about what a function is. A function is a relation, and a relation is a set of ordered pairs, x, y. So it's a relation is a function if for each value of x in the domain, there's exactly one value of y in the range. We'll say y is a function of x. In other words, this vertical line test will tell you if you have a function or not. So what it's saying to be a function is that when you put an input x in, you know what's going to come out of that function machine. You know what your output y is. If you put in an x and you can get anything out, it's not a function. So a vertical line test. The graph defines y as a function of x if no vertical line intersects the graph more than one point. In this example, if we draw a vertical line anywhere, it intersects the graph more than once, right? So if I drew this line through x of 2, when I put in 
2. So if my input is 2, my output from that function can be what? 0. Um, up here is probably about 3.5. And down here is negative 2.5. So my input could lead to one of three outputs. That's not a function. When you put something into a function, you always know what comes out. Now, what if you need to find intercepts using function notation? It's the same process as finding intercepts with any other equation. You just have to remember that f of x is the same as writing y. So to find the x-intercepts, you solve when y equals 0, or f of x equals 0. And to find the y-intercept, you solve when your x is 0, right? x is what's inside the parentheses, the input of our function. So in this example, we have the function p of x, and we need to find our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. Our x-intercepts are going to be when y equals 0. Or we solve this equation to be 0 equals negative x squared plus 12. Add x squared to both sides and x squared equals 12. You take the square root and you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 12 or x equals plus or minus 2 square root of 3. So our x-intercepts are going to be 2 square root of 3 and 0 or negative 2 square root of 3 and 0. Your y-intercept, remember that is when x equals 0. So you're solving p of 0, or negative 0 squared plus 12. 0 plus 12, so p of 0 is equal to 12. So our y-intercept is going to be 0, 12. Now let's talk about how to find domain and range. The domain are going to be the set of x values in the function. Specifically, we want to exclude values of x that make the denominator of a fraction 0 or make the radicand negative for an even index root. And the range are going to be the y values for the function. Okay, so domain are the x and range are the y. Let's write the domain of these three functions in interval notation. The first function, 7x minus 5, is a line. And because it's a line, there isn't anything that needs to be excluded. The domain is going to be all real numbers. And in interval notation, that's from negative infinity through infinity. Now, in example 2, we have the square root of 7x minus 5. And we need to exclude anything that would make the radicand negative. So our radicand can't be negative, so it has to be positive, but it can also be equal to 0. So we solve the inequality 7x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Add 5. 7x is greater than or equal to 5. Divide by 7. And we have x is greater than or equal to 5 sevenths. That's our domain. Our domain has to be a number that is greater than or equal to 5 sevenths. So it goes from 5 sevenths to infinity. Infinity has parentheses because you can never get there. And 5 sevenths will be a bracket because it's included. Example 3, we have a rational expression. 
So the domain cannot include anything that makes the denominator zero. So we need to find what that restricted value is, or we solve the denominator equal to zero. And we add five to both sides, seven x equals five, divide by seven, so x equals 5 sevenths. That's our restriction. x cannot equal 5 sevenths. So our domain then is going to be from negative infinity until we get to 5 sevenths. And then parentheses. We can't get to 5 sevenths. Or it's from the other side, from 5 sevenths through infinity. So it's excluding that five sevenths. Let's look at this graph of a function, f of x, and we're going to answer a through d. a is asking us to determine what f of negative 2 is. Well, remember, this negative 2 is saying x. So what it's saying is x equals negative 2 What's y? Well, let's look at our graph. x is negative 2. Here's x is negative 2. So we look at where our graph is. It's this point. So when x equals negative 2, f of negative 2 equals negative 4. Right? When x is negative 2, y is negative 4. B is asking us to find all x for which f of x equals negative 4. So this is saying y equals negative 4. What's x? So we look at when y equals negative 4. That's right here. Well, we have this point again. x could be negative 2. And we can go to the right x can be positive 2. What about x-intercepts? x-intercepts are going to be wherever our graph crosses the horizontal or the x-axis. So start on the left, and here's our first intercept. I would say that's about 3 and a half, so negative 3 and a half, 0. And we keep on going, and here's a second x-intercept at the origin, 0, 0. And our last question, determine the domain of f. The domain are the possible x values. So you want to start as far left as possible. Notice that our graph on the left has this arrow pointing up to the right or to the left and upwards. That's saying it's pointing towards negative infinity. So negative infinity is possible for x. And we keep on following and everything's possible. Well, look at what happens when we get at x equals 2. Above x equals 2, we have this point 2, 2, which is an open circle. It's not included. But if you go down to the point 2, negative 4, it's closed circle, so it is included. So that part of the graph is still included. And we continue to the right, and notice that we have another arrow pointing off to the right, which is telling us that the graph continues on to positive infinity. So our domain for this function is going to be from negative infinity through positive infinity. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll go check out some of my other math videos for more help.